Hey guys, today we are going to talk about starting points. Uh, this has come up a lot. I know it's come up for me uh, looking around and just seeing where everybody else is uh, when I'm trying to start a business, when they're trying to start a business and uh, just where everybody's in all these different places. And sometimes it's hard to know what's going on with that. Um, so starting points, when you're going to race, do you remember when you were in elementary school, how you'd line up on that line and then someone would say go and everyone would start running and then there would be a winner. And it's like that in any kind of race in the Olympics, for example, uh, everybody starts on the same line. In fact, if somebody jumps forward before they're supposed to, they get disqualified perhaps. Um, but that's the way we really know races. And that's how we're kind of programmed to be. Uh, and we like to see everybody have the same starting point. But in life, that's not how it works, right? The starting points are just all over the place. So some are way ahead, some are farther behind. Um, but the difference with life is that every person is designed for success and every person can be the winner. And that's why the starting point doesn't matter. In this podcast, I'm going to totally debunk the thought that your starting point is holding you back or making it harder for you to succeed. All right, so stay tuned. I'm Gina Kershaw, and I am your host for the Your Today Story podcast. I have a passion for helping women find their true purpose in life. And it all started when I was a criminal defense attorney that actually helped thousands of women get back on their feet and move forward after very challenging times. Building on that experience, I've spent the last 15 years mentoring, motivating, and coaching women to see their true potential so they can start taking action towards living their dream life. This podcast bridges the gap between where you are now and where you want to be by giving you the tools to find your purpose, get control over your emotions and feelings, and start having an impact for good for yourself and everyone around you. These tools are life-changing and will help you to obtain all that you desire, whether it is a successful business or simply peace and clarity in your life. Welcome to the Your Today Story podcast. Hey, everybody. How are you? How are you guys doing? How are you guys hanging out today? Thank you for hopping on the podcast. Um, this is one of those topics that I think just keeps coming back and back to me because I think about it a lot. And during one of my last uh, podcasts, not too long ago, I gave an example of limiting beliefs. I talk about limiting beliefs a lot, but gave an example of some limiting beliefs that can hold us back. And I said something along the lines of like, if you come from a wealthy family, you may not have some of the limiting beliefs that a lot of other people have. And you guys, you guys had questions. Wow. Or comments, comments, I guess. Um, but Gina, if they start off rich, they're obviously going to have it easier. Um, but Gina, Rich people already have a head start. So of course they're going to be the successful ones or this one. But Gina, people with money have the resources to buy ads, hire help and start companies. Of course they're going to be more successful. Well, I love these comments because they show just how strong and just how powerful limiting beliefs can be. And they may even just seem like they're the truth. <laughs> That's because that's what a belief is, right? You think it's true. Um, but actually, it's never a comparison between you and somebody else. And you might think that your particular starting point will never allow you to be as successful as the people that started with money or some other advantage. But your opportunities are just as abundant as theirs. So just to back up for a minute, let's talk for just a couple moments about limiting beliefs. First of all, a belief is something you think backed up by your personal experience and you think you consider it to be a fact, like it's just true. 
And every decision you have ever made in your life is because of a belief you hold. I must say that one more time because it's just so, um, so profound. Every decision you have ever made in your life is because of a belief you hold from things you did to things you didn't do. Every decision you've made is because of something you believe. Yeah. Think about that one. That's a mind blower for sure. But a limiting belief is a belief that's a lie. And these beliefs can be extremely powerful because they're designed to keep you safe by this reptilian part of your survival brain. Anytime you step out of your comfort zone, that part of your brain is going to yell danger, danger, and try to stop you. Um, that's why people are so fearful of stepping out of what they know and moving forward from things that they're comfortable with. A limiting belief is something that's always going to be holding you back from positive change. And again, limiting beliefs are always lies because your higher self knows that you have a purpose. It knows you have potential, like unlimited potential. So anything that you say or believe that holds you back is not in your design. It's not in your divine nature at all. It's a lie. So things like um, limiting beliefs like this, um, there are things like, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I am a procrastinator. I don't follow through or I am always late. Like think of whatever your story is, right? That, that you have in your brain about why you can't move forward. And these beliefs, the these stories that you have, they're tricky because these thoughts present themselves as facts, like, like the, uh, I'm always late, but their only function is to keep you in one place, never making progress, never moving towards your true potential and purpose. So if you missed the prior podcast about limiting beliefs, I just want to make the point that your environment while growing up can have a huge impact influence on what you believe to be possible in your life. Now, this is kind of an extreme example, but if you've always known private jets, elite, like Ivy League universities, you're all your, your family's always gone to an Ivy League university. Um, if you've always gone on tropical vacations every year, if you have designer clothes, designer handbags, then you already know that these things are possible for you. And they're probably not even a very big deal to you. You don't have any limiting beliefs around these things because they're already a part of what you have always known. Now compare that experience to someone who's never been on an airplane, who thinks it's a long shot to even go to college, who's never traveled beyond their own state, let alone out of the country. This person might have dreams of going to Hawaii someday, but they might also have all kinds of limiting beliefs around that, like especially how, how am I going to make that happen? And they might even think in their mind that their dreams are impossible or nearly impossible. For me, this, when I think about, you know, possibilities and, you know, what I never experienced in my childhood or, or up until now, and the things that I would love to do, one thing that comes to mind is this thought of flying on a private jet to, to someplace beautiful and wonderful. Um, it's something I've always wanted to do. It's on my vision board. I really want to experience it someday. And in my heart, I know it will happen. But sometimes in my head, I'm not 100% sure that it is possible. For me. Now that's a limiting belief because why wouldn't it be possible? If it's possible for the person who grew up with lots of money, then it's possible for me too, right? <laughs> well, they're not more deserving of this luxury than me. The universe or God hasn't specifically picked them out, pointed at them and said, you to the private jet. And then over there to me, you stay here in San Bernardino County, never leave. But Gina, you might be thinking, they had money. 
They have a better starting point. And I get it. I hear you. So that's exactly why I wanted to do this podcast, because thinking that someone has a better starting point than you is a limiting belief. Because when you look down at where your feet are standing, you are making the decision based upon that belief that your starting point can't get you as far as the other person. And that is simply a lie. Your starting point is never the reason why you'll have success or not. It's just your starting point. And everyone's is different. So the key is to actually start at your starting point and to move forward from there, even slowly. I mean, remember the tortoise and the hare story? Slow progress is still massive progress when you count up the minutes, the hours, the days, the years. One of the best ways to blast these limiting beliefs is to look for and find evidence that that limiting belief is not true. So if the limiting belief is that people with a disadvantaged starting point are not able to have massive, massive success, um, then I'm going to give you 10 examples of people that started off poor or had some trauma in their lives to show you how your starting point is not the determining factor of your eventual success. All right, I'm gonna start with number one, Howard Schultz. All right, you may not know this name, but you know who this guy is. This is the guy that made Starbucks the global company it is today. When Howard was a child, his family was poor. They didn't have advantages. They lived in government subsidized housing. And in interviews later, he said that he carried a lot of shame for what he calls being a poor kid. And when he was seven years old, he recalls having a realization moment that his father was a broken man after he'd been working in these dead end jobs, he couldn't bring in money um, to help his family. Can you imagine that at seven years old, um, looking up to your father and realizing that he was broken and you're living in poverty and really feeling like there's no future for you? But instead of looking at things that way, it was this hardship that seemed to motivate Howard to become the success that he is today. And his net worth today is about $3 billion. All right. Um, number two, John Paul DeJoria. You may have heard of him. He is one of the founders of Patron Tequila and Paul Mitchell Hair Care Systems. So as a youth, um, John Paul was, you know, had been in the foster care system. He grew up poor in Los Angeles. He did say this. He said, I remember once in junior high school on a Friday, my mom came home from work, said to my brother and I, you know, between us, we have only 27 cents, but we have food in the refrigerator. We have our little garden out back and we're happy. So we are rich. I love that. He went to work at one point in a Redken factory. Redken is a, a beauty brand. Um, and he started, he, he realized he had this interest in the shampoo industry. And so he tried to start his own shampoo business and even tried to sell shampoo door to door. Come on, exhausting, lots of rejection. And he even slept in his car. In fact, he was homeless twice before he ended up partnering up with Paul Mitchell and creating a billion dollar hair care brand. And he is now worth $2.7 billion. All right, number three, J.K. Rowling. Come on, you guys. She's one of my favorites. She is the author of the Harry Potter books. And she, you know, in interviews, remembers days when she would not eat so that her daughter could have food. And she has talked about how she remembers nights when there was literally no money. But after writing and getting the Harry Potter books published, she earned $95 million between June 2016 and June 2017. And now she's a philanthropist. She gives back. Um, she has given back like 
almost $200 million to charitable groups. And her net worth right now is a billion dollars, 1 billion. Wow, you guys. I mean, can you see how if they, even the first three, if because living in poverty and really having nothing, if they had looked at themselves and say, this is my starting point and looked over at somebody else and realized, oh, they grew up with money and wealth, but I, I can never have that. How limiting that is when they really truly had so much potential. Um, number four, Halle Berry. Oh, I love her. Um, but before she was an Oscar winning uh, actress, she had slept in a homeless shelter um, because as a struggling actress, she was she was trying to find cheaper housing and just truly struggling. And she says that her struggles during her early acting career actually made her stronger in the end. And in an interview with People Magazine, she said, it taught me how to take care of myself and that I could live through any situation, even if it meant going to a shelter for a small stint. And as of 2021, Halle Berry has a reported net worth of 90 million. What about Sarah Jessica Parker? Right, We all know her as Carrie Bradshaw on Sex and the City. Um, before she was a famous actress, she was just a small town girl from Nelsonville, Ohio. Who knows where that is, right? Um, she went through a point in her life where her family even stopped celebrating birthdays, holidays, and other family occasions. She was one of nine children. Just that fact alone, just that part of your family history might make you feel like you're disadvantaged um, just because there's not enough usually, it feels like, to go around. But she says she remembers times when her family couldn't afford to pay for electricity or the phone bill. And in spite of her poverty, her family's poverty, and being like just a, a normal kid from a small town in the Midwest, she became a famous actress with net worth now of 150 million. All right, number six. Oh, one of my absolute, absolute favorites, Dolly Parton. Wow, her start. I didn't know this, but she was the fourth of 12 children. Oh my gosh, you guys, 12 children, the fourth of 12 children. And her parents struggled constantly to try to make ends meet for this large family. Her dad was a tobacco farmer and a construction worker. He never learned how to read or write because he left school at a very young age. And her mother just devoted her life to raising her kids. And from those humble beginnings, Dolly Parton has been in show business for six decades. She's had numerous number one hit singles. She's won nine or 10 Grammys. Her net worth is $600 million as of 2021. And with this money, she's been extremely generous. In fact, you probably remember recently this last year, she donated a million dollars to help fund a potential COVID-19 vaccine long before any of the other like big dogs got involved with that. She was a total pace setter for that. What a woman. Um, number seven, Ed Sheeran. He is one of the biggest names in music, but Ed Sheeran started off as a struggling artist in London. So as you're struggling in your business, remember that many of these people who have become uber successful were also in your same shoes at one point and struggling and wondering if they were ever going to be able to, you know, make it big. But they kept trying, kept going. Ed Sheeran said he would spend nights sleeping in the London underground train stations on top of heating vents. Come on now. He said there was an arch outside Buckingham Palace that has a heating duct. And he says this, I spent a couple of nights there. That's where I wrote the song Homeless and the lines, it's not a homeless night for me. I'm just home less than I'd like to be. Wow. Now he sells out stadiums across the world and has a net worth of $270 million. Gone from sleeping on heater vents to selling out stadium, stadiums worldwide. 
Number eight, I had to add him in here because he's an icon, Steve Jobs. Um, He is exalted as one of the greatest minds in modern history, but he also came from humble beginnings. I didn't know this, but his his parents struggled to support him, and he ended up living with another couple, Paul and Clara Jobs, because he his parents couldn't support him. That's crazy. Like that might be something that you feel has disadvantaged you. You feel rejected. Um, but he didn't let that hold him back. He was fascinated by computers. And this fascination like, led to just finding out more and more and taking those small steps. And he, he didn't like to go to school. <laughs> Steve Jobs, oh, love that guy. Like He came from such humble beginnings, but he had interests that just held him and like created this passion, right? So even though he had these disadvantages, he didn't even like to go to school. He dropped out of college after the first semester. He started working at a video game company, Atari. Oh, loved Pong when I was growing up. And then he made the first ever Apple machine. Steve Jobs, along with his partner, Steve Wozniak, um, actually funded their initial entrepreneurial venture by selling like some of their prized possessions. Steve Jobs sold his Volkswagen bus and Wozniak sold like a beloved scientific calculator that he had. But Jobs was worth $10.2 billion with a B at the time of his death in 2011. That was 10 years ago. (sighs) Well, I wanted to touch on a couple also that have faced traumatic experiences in their life. Because if you have faced a trauma, and we talked about this last week with Tara Newell, sometimes facing a trauma or having a traumatic event in your life can make you have these limiting beliefs of not being good enough, not being worthy, um, just like fear of of putting yourself out there. Um, The part of your brain that holds you back is like even stronger to protect you. And so I wanted to add some of these people, a couple people um, in here that have had experienced extreme trauma to show you that that's also something that you can set aside and move forward from. Number nine was my um, my first one of those, Charlize Theron. So she grew up in a household with an alcoholic father who was very abusive to her mother. So as a child, you know, growing up, she watched this abuse um, happen in her life daily. It was just part of her existence. It was part of her environment. And then when she was 15 years old, her alcoholic father came home one night after, you know, going on a binge and threatened to kill her mother. In self-defense, her mother took the gun that he was holding, you know, pointed at her and shot back at him and killed him. So Charlize Theron, Theron, she says this, she says, I survived that and I'm proud of that. I've worked hard. I'm not scared of this experience. I'm not fearful of the darkness. If anything, I'm intrigued by it because I think it explains human nature and people better. Charlize Theron went on to become a famous actress starring to date in about in at least 63 films and her net worth is 260 million dollars. Yeah, coming from trauma, coming from a household where there was fear, constant fear and able to move ahead. All right, my last one is of course Oprah Wow. Her story, if you've never read it before or heard about it, it is mind boggling what she was able to overcome. Um, Oprah was born to a poor teenage single mom in Mississippi, and she grew up in a house where there was no running water or electricity. And she was abused and molested by two family members and a family friend. 
before she was 13. She ended up running away from home at the age of 13. And at 14 years old, she gave birth to a child who died. Do you see all the beliefs about herself that she could have unapol unapologetically, you know, let hold her back, but she didn't. She focused on school. She started participating in beauty pageants, and then she worked at a radio station and, and ultimately ended up entering the media world from that. And now she's one of the most beloved celebrities in the world. She has a net worth of $2.65 billion. So that's the limiting belief blaster, <laughs> right? Think of the limiting beliefs that you have. And if one of your limiting beliefs is that your starting point is making it harder for you to find success, now you know that that is a lie. That is a lie. Your starting point does not define you. It's just your starting point. And this place was actually meant to be your starting point. How do I know that? Because it is your starting point. That's how I know it was meant to be. So start here at your starting point. This is where you were meant to begin because this is the point that's going to bring you the biggest wins, the greatest clarity and insight and success in your purpose. And if you keep moving forward, you're going to have all the things that have been planned for you from the beginning, including abundance, love, happiness, and rides in private jets. Have a great week, you guys. Hey, I know I've said it before, but I really just have to say again how much I appreciate you being here. I love these conversations with you. I love your comments. Uh, if you have any thoughts or key takeaways or wins, please reach out to me and share them. You can always tag me on Instagram at Gina Kershaw and let me know uh, what you're thinking. What was the thing in this podcast that hit you the strongest? I want to remind you that the Your Today Story Challenge is coming up in the next few weeks. And the Your Today Story uh, project is also going to be available soon. I'd love for you to join me in the challenge. It's completely free. Um, what we're going to do is learn a new morning routine. That's not actually a morning routine even. It's two minute mindset hack. First thing in the morning that will get you started on the right track for your day. What's amazing about this two minute morning mindset routine is that when you try it, try it for a week, you're, you're going to be so surprised, so surprised at the difference it makes. So what we're going to do in the challenge is I'm going to help you get really clear about who you are and you know, what you want to do with your life, what your purpose is, and then show you what you're thinking. What are the thoughts that you're thinking first thing in the morning that are holding you back, teach you this two minute mindset routine and then um, give you some homework, give you a few things to do so you can really try it out and see the difference that it's going to make in your life. It is freaking awesome. I hope you will join us. Um, I think that the link right now is uh, www.yourtodaystory.com. If you're listening to this podcast later and the Your Today Story Challenge has already ended, uh, I think you can go to that. I'll make it so that you can go to that link still and get on the wait list for the next um, time around. But I hope you'll join me. You'll be surprised at all the progress and um, just the insight and clarity that you're going to get from doing that. All right. Thank you guys again for being here. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, I would love for you to do that. And of course, would love a review that always helps uh, push us up in the ratings and helps us to get seen by more people and to help more people. All right, you guys, thanks so much. I'll see you again soon.